over 75% of all current Bitcoin trading volume now comes from futures, and the total futures volume is more than six times that of the spot market. So if you're still ignoring Bitcoin derivatives, you're missing the bigger picture. So in this video, I'll walk you through the key charts I like to watch, explain how this side of the market really works, and show how they're influencing price, sentiment, and what's coming next. Before we go any further, let's quickly break down what we mean by spot and futures. Spot trading is the simplest form. You're buying or selling Bitcoin directly and the transaction settles instantly. You actually take ownership of your Bitcoin in the spot market. Futures trading, on the other hand, is a bit different. You're not buying Bitcoin itself. You're trading a contract that speculates on where the price will be in the future. It's often done with leverage, which means you can control a much larger position with a smaller amount of capital. So, now that we're clear on the difference, let's look at why futures are dominating this market and what that means for price action. We're now a futures-dominated market, clearly shown by the purple areas on the chart. This means that most trading activity is driven by leverage and speculation, rather than actual buying and selling of the underlying Bitcoin. Unlike spot markets, where coins change hands and reflect genuine demand, futures markets allow traders to open large positions with minimal capital, amplifying both upside and downside volatility. This creates a market structure where price can be heavily influenced by funding rates, open interest imbalances, and liquidations rather than organic accumulation or distribution. In contrast, a spot-dominated market tends to suggest stronger conviction as participants are taking direct ownership of Bitcoin rather than trading synthetic exposure. So, just how much more volume is flowing through futures compared to spot? Well, last month alone, futures trading across all major exchanges hit nearly $4 trillion, while spot trading came in just under $700 billion. That means spot accounted for only about 15% of total Bitcoin trading volume, with futures making up a staggering 85%. And this isn't some anomaly. If we zoom out and look at the cumulative volume over the years, futures consistently represent four to six times more volume than spot. It's a long-term structural shift, not a short-term blip. And while on-chain data and spot flows provide incredibly valuable insight into long-term conviction and accumulation, understanding what's happening in the derivatives market is now equally essential. Next, let's break down the key metrics and see how they influence Bitcoin's short-term price movements. One of the most widely watched futures metrics is funding rates. These are periodic payments exchanged between long and short traders based on the difference between perpetual futures prices and spot prices. They effectively reflect sentiment in the perpetual swaps market and the payment amount is proportional to the number of open contracts. Positive funding rates shown in green indicate that longs are dominant and paying shorts. Negative funding rates in red mean shorts are in control and paying longs. Now this is one of the most useful charts if you're looking to make contrarian plays. In bull markets, every time funding flips negative, it tends to mark local bottoms, those painful dip moments that often turn into perfect buying opportunities. As the old Warren Buffett saying goes, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Now, you probably won't see Buffett dabbling in Bitcoin futures, but the principle still applies. You want to be long when the crowd is short, and vice versa. Following the herd usually ends badly. You'll also notice that the biggest green spikes in funding often line up with local price tops, a signal that traders are aping into leveraged longs at exactly the wrong time. Funding rates are currently positive, but only marginally. And if we look at the 30-day simple moving average, it's still sitting at remarkably low levels, which is encouraging, especially considering we're hovering near all-time highs. It tells us that although futures are dominating the market, we're not yet in a dangerously over-leveraged position. And that's exactly the kind of setup you want to see if Bitcoin's going to push through to new highs. Another key concept to understand is open interest which represents the total number of open positions, both longs and shorts, across a derivatives exchange's trading pairs. Right now, open interest is surging, sitting at around $37 billion, the highest level since the beginning of this bull market. 
This surge shows that capital is flowing back into the futures market, with traders taking on larger, more leveraged positions. But rising open interest is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it signals growing participation and momentum. On the other, it adds potential fuel for liquidations if the market makes a sharp move. Open interest doesn't tell us if the crowd is mostly long or short, but it does reflect how tightly wound the market is. And when OI climbs this aggressively near major resistance levels, like all-time highs, it can go one of two ways, a breakout powered by short squeezes or a fast drop triggered by liquidation cascades. The key is to track not just the size of open interest, but how it aligns with funding rates, price structure and liquidation zones. When it comes to liquidation zones, another powerful contrarian signal is found in the long-short liquidation dominance. If we look at the chart, we can see that during major price rallies, there's often a surge in short liquidations, shown as large red spikes. These typically indicate that the market has flushed out overly bearish positions and may be due for a short-term cool-off before continuing higher. On the flip side, when we see big green spikes, signaling heavy long liquidations, it usually marks a point of maximum pessimism. These moments often align with prime buying opportunities when sentiment is at its lowest. This chart is one of my go-to buy-the-dip signals that I monitor regularly. Right now we're seeing more shorts being liquidated than longs, which aligns with the recent upside momentum. However, liquidation levels don't appear extreme just yet, suggesting we're not in dangerously overextended territory. Now, rising futures open interest is generally a bullish sign. It shows growing participation and capital entering the market. But there's also a potential imbalance forming beneath the surface. Since the most recent halving, only 3.125 new Bitcoin are mined every 10 minutes. But at the same time, an estimated 1.15 synthetic Bitcoin are being introduced into the market through paper contracts, mostly via futures. And this could be diluting price dynamics. What we're potentially seeing is a slow decoupling between the spot and derivatives markets, where Bitcoin's price is increasingly influenced by leverage speculation, not organic demand for the real asset. This may partly explain why price has stalled, despite massive institutional adoption and a growing list of Bitcoin treasury companies. If this synthetic supply keeps expanding while real spot supply tightens, we could be setting up for a market squeeze, one where real demand overwhelms paper exposure forcing sharp repositioning and liquidations. It's conceptually similar to what happened during the 1980 silver squeeze, when the Hunt brothers tried to corner the market by buying up physical silver while paper trading exploded. At one point, there were over 300 ounces of paper silver for every ounce of the real thing. Eventually, it all collapsed when regulators stepped in and liquidity dried up. Bitcoin's market structure is very different. It's digital, globally traded, and far more transparent. A squeeze of that scale is unlikely, but the growing gap between synthetic and physical Bitcoin is a pressure point most people aren't talking about, and if that ever did snap, it could lead to sudden and extreme volatility. Now, the final futures chart I want to cover is the take-a-sell volume. This metric represents the total volume of market sell orders in perpetual swaps. In other words, it shows how much aggressive selling is happening in the market as opposed to passive sell orders sitting on the order book. When the take-a-sell volume spikes, it reflects heightened short-term selling pressure and often signals increased investor attention or panic. Interestingly, we often see this volume spike as Bitcoin rallies to new highs, driven by traders aggressively shorting into strength, either trying to fade the move or hedge their exposure. But right now, take-a-sell volume is unusually subdued especially considering we're trading near all-time highs. This is actually a bullish sign, because it tells us the market isn't overwhelmed with aggressive short-selling or panic-driven exits. There's still room for buyers to step in without battling a wall of resistance from forced sellers. It also suggests that sentiment, at least among active futures traders, is not overly bearish or fearful, which creates healthier conditions for continuation to the upside. So, to wrap things up, the Bitcoin market today is clearly dominated by futures trading, with over 75% of the total volume coming from these derivative contracts. 
This means a lot of what's driving short-term price moves isn't just people buying or selling actual Bitcoin, but traders speculating with leverage, which can really amplify volatility. It's a structural shift that every trader and investor needs to understand if they want to keep up with how the market really works. At the same time, derivatives are reshaping the overall market structure. More and more capital is flowing into these leveraged contracts, which means that price action is increasingly influenced by synthetic exposure rather than pure spot demand. This can sometimes mask what's happening with real Bitcoin ownership and make price moves feel disconnected from actual supply and demand dynamics. But despite all that complexity, the current metrics we're seeing are actually encouraging. Funding rates remain low, take-or-sell volume is subdued, and liquidation risks don't look extreme. All signs that the market is in a relatively healthy state. This kind of setup is exactly what you want to see if Bitcoin is going to push higher and break through its previous all-time highs. So, keep an eye on these futures-driven indicators. They're key to understanding where the market is headed next. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live, built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description, where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.